Hey everyone! Good morning and or almost good afternoon and happy Mother's Day. Um, I hope that you are all enjoying your day and there is lots that has changed around the garden and I can't wait to show you everything. This is week three of our garden tours so I'm going to take you around and show you everything that has changed. You may already notice there are some new changes back here, so I can't wait to show them to you. Okay. So here, our first bed is doing really good. We have our Swiss chard coming up nicely. I need to come in here and thin some out. And behind that, we have some zucchini. I need to thin that out as well. I think I'm just going to take the second smaller plants and transplant them to another area. Then we have some cucumbers. You can see that some of them are getting a little bit of sun scald on them, but they are bouncing back. But they're doing really good. Doing really nice here. Everything's looking really good. Lots of weeds. That's just what happens. Beautiful purple lady bok choy. Got some more zucchini here. Doing really well. And I've got some empty space still in this box. I plan on trans. Planting some of the peppers I've started, some of the sweet peppers, but we've had some problems with those, and I will show you that once we're done out here in the garden. And it is hot today. Alright, so in the second bed, our broccoli, doing really well. We've got some flowers here. I want to say... Gosh... I don't even remember what I planted there right now. <laughs> I'll have to look back and see what I planted and then I'll put it on the video screen since I cannot remember. And then we also, we've planted some Yukon Gold in the front of the bed. So this bed is completely planted out. And looks like I've got some bug damage on some of my beans back there. Not much. I'm actually planning on spraying neem oil on all of my plants tonight. Don't want to do it in the morning because it'll burn your plants, but tonight I plan on spraying down everything with neem oil because we have got major pest issues out here. So on the onions, onions are doing really good. Those are Walla Wallas. And the bed three over here, more potatoes. This bed's doing really nice. And lots of sugar snap peas coming along really well. Those guys are doing awesome. Lots of them in here. I'm going to put them up on the trellis soon. And another broccoli plant. Doing really nice. And then... Down here, I have some orange hat tomatoes. Now, the orange hat tomatoes are a dwarf type of tomato, and they're really good for pots. So I have two right here. They're not going to get very big. Maybe the most they're going to get is seven inches tall, so not very big at all. Okay. Yeah, so here I have some more orange hats in a hanging basket. Those are doing doing really well. So, got two little guys in here. I can't wait to show you guys all this. And we've as you can see, we've got these cattle panels up. And we've got all of our tomatoes over here planted. Some are a lot bigger than others, but 
that's just where they were at. Everything seems to be doing pretty good. I need to water them again tonight. But I was waiting to do the neem oil and then water. Water before, then do the neem oil. Got some more greens in here. Okay. Now this front bed of flowers is doing all right. It's um, doing pretty good. Got some little plants here. Let's see. So this right here is supposed to be kiss me over the garden gate. This flower and plant is supposed to get oh gosh six to ten feet tall and right now it is only maybe a foot tall and I don't know how much bigger it's gonna get it's kind of disappointing it hasn't grown very much but we'll see um, later on how it does okay and over here we have some of our flowers that are growing in this box. I've got some zinnias, some calendula. I have some bush acorn squash, which I need to come in and I'm probably going to just do that right now. Looks like I got to thin that guy out. Got a couple in here. Let those guys go. Just keep one. There's a bush acorn squash. Some more flowers here doing really well if a cabbage that's trying to stay struggling some pretty flowers that just bloomed I love them I love these little vampire flowers I got these from my neighbor I love them lots of beans these guys are doing really good so far no insect damage on this bunch here but the same beans over in the other bed have lots of insect damage doing good we got some more flowers here blueberries rosemary everything's doing pretty good now here I've got all of my peppers well my jalapenos now I got these from my neighbor and every single plant that I bought from my neighbor has bug problems. And I don't know why, but um, yeah, there are lots of aphids on all of these plants. I don't know if you'll be able to see them, but you might be able to see some of their eggs. So tonight I need to come out here. Right now it's way too hot to do anything. But this garden tour, I'm not trying to stay out here. Okay. This bed, we got some more tomatoes. They're doing okay. It's pretty warm out here, but tomatoes are really forgiving. Got another broccoli. More zinnias. Oh. Got another tomato. Looks like he's struggling. I gotta get some fertilizer on them. I've got some organic fertilizer. The mint is in heaven. This stuff is great. Okay, so like I was saying, this mint is doing fabulous. I have it in a pot right now, and they are about, hmm, I wanna say six to eight inches apart. And I have a plan to trim them up and have them fountain or waterfall over the sides. And um, so far it's doing pretty good. Just need to trim on the insides here. I have four different types of mint in this pot here. I have a chocolate mint. I have a mojito mint. I have a peppermint. And I have a strawberry mint. Now the strawberry mint is, let's see, let's see. You know, it looks, let's see if I can get it focused, probably not. 
but it's uh, got a hint of a strawberry flavor to it. It's really good. Put it in your water. I like it. I like it. But it is my favorite mint out here is definitely the chocolate mint. Now, let's see if I can pull some off here. So, the chocolate mint. Oh, it smells like a peppermint patty. And what I like to do with this chocolate mint is I like to dehydrate it, chop it up, and put it in some brownies or some fudge. Let's off a really good mint flavor. Mm, it's so good. That one's my favorite. I love growing that stuff. Okay. Let's keep moving on. I have some more tomatoes that are struggling right now. Um, flip the camera around and show you a little bit. Okay. So I have some tomatoes that are doing really good, and then I have some tomatoes that are doing not so good. The only thing I can think of is maybe, you know, when I planted them, I didn't water them enough or what, but it's, these are the same variety, so I'm not really sure. But all my tomatoes over here are doing really good. This entire section, both sides, plus this one over here. These are all seeds I started from M.I. Gardener, the Wisconsin 55. I grew them last year. They're amazing. They don't get too, too tall. We're going to see. Last year they got a little stunted because I tried using these and they got too tall for these. So I'm going to try this method this year and see how these tomatoes do on this uh, cattle panel trellis. So I think they're going to do really good. They are looking fantastic. And I started all these guys from seeds. The ones, again, the stuff I bought from my neighbor are not doing good. Everything that I started from seed is doing really well. So I trimmed these guys up before I planted them. And uh, they are just loving life right now. All right, over here. So the tomatoes I got from my neighbor, I got some Goliaths. I got one Cherokee purple that actually looks like it's about to. It's got a blossom right here. A little early, but might just let that one go. We'll see. Um, and then one that I started from seed. Here is a Chadwick cherry. These are more like a saladette, larger cherry tomato. Um, I'm excited. I have about four or five of those in the garden this year. In the middle of this cow, cattle panel trellis here, I have some calendula that's rocking. I have a couple zinnias that are coming back. They weren't doing good. Now they're doing a lot better. And let's see, on this side here, I have Golden Jenny melons. And they are doing really good. They like sandy soil. They can grow in our zone. These are, I want to say, like personal sized cantaloupes. They're sweet like that, but they're about, you know, three pounds maybe four like they're very small they're like handheld little cantaloupes little melons so I have them on this side here and again on this this one over there nothing yet I'm still waiting for my seeds to finish germinating inside so those are going to be squash plants and then over here I have a couple more golden jennies and then I'm going to plant some yard long beans to go with the golden jennies in this space right here. So. And over here from my neighbors, these are doing really good. These are romas, and they actually are doing really good. I like growing romas. I didn't grow any from seed this year because the seeds that I like to grow were out of stock, but that's okay. 
these will be fine. I'm supporting my neighbor and their business, so. But, um, yeah, they're doing really good. Then here, can't really see anything yet. But we have our russets in these bags. This is new for us this year to try this, so. We will let you know how, how it goes. So we rolled them down to let the sun in a little more. We have about three or four small russets. Um, if you remember my potato video, the video where I talked about how we're planting our potatoes, these are the same potatoes that I planted out the other day. So we'll see. This is an experiment. This is new for us to do the russets this way. So we'll let you know. <laughs> And still nothing in that. I'm waiting for some more seeds to get here. And yep, more. There's more of the tomatoes. That bed is completely empty. There's nothing in that one yet. And uh, just waiting for stuff to germinate and waiting to move stuff that's under the my my hardening off zone, which is my canopy. <laughs> waiting to plant that stuff. And then in this pool, I've got this giant trellis that's in the way, but you can kind of see. Let's see. Yeah, zoom in a little bit here. We've got our calendula and some zinnias in this pool, and our marigold here in front is doing really well. Cabbage is uh, sad. And then we have a scarlet kale behind the marigold that's doing really well so all right okay all right now this is something I was very excited to show you Curtis built me this and we actually plan on coming out with the plans for this it is a gutter strawberry holder and it is working fabulous for our strawberries. And let's see. You can even see we have lots of blossoms and even some fruit coming on. So everything's doing really well on these gutters. Now these are strawberries that are going to let off shoots. So that's why we space them so far apart. So when they let off a shoot and they come down and they let it off in here, we're gonna have probably double the amount of strawberries next year as we do this year. But again, everything's looking really, really well. You can see there's lots of new growth. There's lots of drainage holes. So everything's draining really well. And on this side, I didn't have enough strawberries this year. So we are doing some salad greens up here. Um, just to, you know, use the space. We've got it. Why not? So I've got some butter crunch, lettuce, some rouge de hiver. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's a red leaf version of romaine lettuce. And then I have a Merlot Nero spinach. Again, if I'm butchering that name, I apologize. But everything's going really good in these gutters. I can't wait to see these germinate and these strawberries are doing fantastic. This is actually a strawberry from last year we transplanted over here. It's doing really good. So as I'm coming around, I'm trying to see if there's anything else I missed. And these little basil plants are struggling. I think they just got too hot too fast. But the oregano is kicking. It's kicking butt. Oh, it smells so good. I also love oregano. That spice. So good. Oy. Let's walk through a spider web. Oh, well. Okay, cool. so over here we've got our little parsnip bed, and I just noticed, I don't know if you can see that, oh, 
right there. Little parsnip. I don't see any other ones coming out. It takes a really long time. Oh, there's parsnip seed that got washed out. But this is what a parsnip seed looks like. And actually, it's kind of cool that that was there. See, that's a parsnip seed. And um, it takes a really long time for them to germinate, just like carrots. So it's encouraging to see just one. These are older seeds, so we'll see if any else germinate. But at least I got one. That's better than none. Okay, so this is the sadness of the peppers. These peppers I got from my neighbor, and I know it's not their fault, but they were just riddled with aphids. And I did not notice before I brought them home. So the aphids were not on my peppers, but I sprayed them with DE to be safe. And I usually don't use DE because I don't want it to affect the bees. But since none of these are flowering, I went ahead and did DE on them to try and get ahead of this problem. So, yeah, I was planning on planting these in the garden, but I think I'm going to wait. And the bugs are just having a heyday with these bad boys so I'm gonna try and get ahead of this problem before it gets way too out of control so yeah so this is what's going on under here all those right here on the cart are for my dad so I got to deliver those to him this week those are uh, things I started for him and of course his plans are looking great <laughs> so I gotta get those over to him so he can get them in his garden so maybe we'll deliver those today and we'll see. But yeah, so this is everything that's going on on the table. It's pretty sad. But I know it'll get better. Just want to get ahead of the aphid problem before it gets worse. Okay. So I am out here at the other garden. The one that was in the chicken area. And it has exploded with weeds. Um, just from having rain and then sun, rain, sun, and now like crazy weather. All of my arugula has bolted. Just, it feels like overnight. Um, it's just crazy to me what's happened in a small amount of time. So I'm going to flip the camera around and show you from the outside because we actually decided to let this go and we are going to bring the chickens back into this area next weekend so let me flip this around okay so in this garden it has just come Ooh, it's terrible but guess what that's okay it's okay as you can see here this front part here we have some salad greens and then right here this area right there there is a lot of arugula that has decided to bolt you can see it it's just tall oh yeah out of nowhere so but don't worry, you know, the chickens are gonna eat all this. They're gonna be happy in here. So if they're happy, I'm happy. And I'm excited to move them to a fresh new grass. So we've been waiting to let them in here. And now it is the time. So I wanted to take you out here to the other part of our property. And the grass is extremely long. You know, there's always something when it comes to farming or anything that has to do with a farm. Um, our mower broke <laughs> last weekend. And uh, yeah, so we have to wait for the part to get here. So till then, 
it's going to be really long grass, and it's not going to take too long to get here, another week, but I'm going to be walking through this tall grass for a little bit. So I'm going to flip the camera around and show you the other garden that we are going to be planting corn and some of our summer squash in. So let me flip the camera around and show you what we got going on. Okay. So over here, we have got our squash areas. Sorry, I thought I heard something. The chicken run, but just chickens. So we've got our summer squash area. We've got these two mounted up with compost that has been uh, fertilized with fish emulsion. So they are good to go. Um, we're going to be doing some holes in these here. So I want to say this is about a 30 foot row, two rows. So we'll be getting plenty of summer squash here. And then over here, this area is going to be our small little corn patch. Curtis is doing this himself. I'm very proud of him for wanting to do this. So he's going to be planting corn in this patch right here. And there's our neighbors. Our friends for the summer. Love them. Sometimes I just find great peace walking around the property. You know, it's a beautiful day. It's hot. But the sounds of the river and of the birds and nature, just so peaceful. I love it. I love it. I'm going to flip this around and show you our blackberry forest. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, how many acres of blackberries we actually have. So for anyone that grows blackberries on purpose, here where I live, blackberries are a weed. We use them for jam, but they're an invasive weed out here. <laughs> so. Alright, so just a little perspective. There's the house, there's the garden over there. There's the may, the corn and area over there. And then we have about three and a half acres around our house. There's blackberries. More blackberries. More blackberries. More blackberries. And then up here towards the river, which there's a trail up here. We have another five and a half acres along the trail. That is blackberries and trees. But yeah, <laughs> we have so many blackberries, it's crazy. And that's why we get pigs, is to help root out all of these crazy blackberries. And that's why we're thinking of getting goats in the future to help eat this down so we have more land to work with. But if you remember when we first started our journey here at our new homestead and farm, uh, you remember how overgrown everything was and how we thought it was going to be impossible for us to do anything with this land and this property. But you can see behind me, all that used to be blackberries. And we had our pigs last year and they helped us clear it and keep it cleared and it was amazing and I am so thankful for those pigs and look at we even found farm gates hidden in the blackberries that the owners before us left for us so we are very thankful for those farm gates they are going to come in handy around the homestead so but if you are new to our channel I just would like to say welcome you know we started this channel just to make videos for ourselves so we can remember later on and if we share them with others that's great and we love that you're here we love 
you know, we love having people subscribe to our channel and give our videos thumbs up. So make sure to subscribe and follow us along on our journey. And welcome to the Naval Family Homestead. We appreciate you. All right. Thank you. Have a good day.